This is the first episode of the Versus series I'm starting on this channel, where I take a look at a popular game that everyone knows and I put it up against a game no one knows about and see if I can uncover a hidden gem or if that forgotten game should remain forgotten. In this episode, I'll be putting two fast-paced racing games against each other to see who comes out on top. Will it be Speed Racer, a movie tying game tarnished by the stigma of being a mid-2000s licensed movie game? Or F-Zero GX, a beloved Nintendo franchise followed by a loyal fanbase of players still waiting for Nintendo to bring this franchise back from the grave? Starting off with Speed Racer, Speed Racer the video game was released in 2008 and is a tie-in game to the Speed Racer movie. It was released on mobile devices, Wii, DS, and PS2. The PS2 is the definitive version of the game since it has 6 tracks compared to the Wii's 5 tracks, and the DS's mere 3 tracks. I didn't know this going in, but combat is actually a big focus in the game, which should have made sense in hindsight since the movie did have a lot of car combat in it. As for the story, there isn't much of one apart from an intro cutscene which sets the stage saying you have to become the best racer and become the league champion. I guess they figured that the movie would cover the plot while the game gave you the feeling of driving the cars. Our other game, F-Zero GX, was released in 2003, just 4 months before Mario Kart Double Dash. It's an extremely fast-paced racing game that relies on twitch reactions and extreme precision. This game has an insanely high skill ceiling and is the most difficult racing game I've ever played. After playing this game for a few months, Double Dash probably felt like it was made for babies. I can see why there's such a devoted fanbase craving a new F-Zero game, considering this was the last release in the franchise. Some people think F-Zero and Mario Kart cannibalize each other's sales, but after playing this I know for a fact that they aren't even in the same ballpark of racing games. All I'm saying is that Nintendo should probably consider making another F-Zero game. Are you alright Speed? <laughs> Once you get through the opening cutscene, you are given some options as to the style of gameplay you want to play. There's single race, where you just play one race and try to get first, time trial, where you race on a track and try to get the fastest overall track time with no other racers, and my favorite, the championship cup events. These are the main event of the game and how you unlock all the different characters, class types, and cup events. These have you race against other racers on 2-4 to four tracks in the cups and you are given points based on your position at the end of each race, as well as how much damage you did to the other racers while performing your Carfu moves. What's Carfu I hear you saying? I'm glad you asked. Carfu is the combat you do with your car that can damage and take down other racers. It's almost necessary to do Carfu because every time you hit someone with a move, you gain boost, which you can either use to well, boost, or you can use it to heal so you don't die and have to respawn back on the track. It's similar to takedowns in the Burnout series if you've ever played those games, however here you actually have to press buttons to perform the various attacks while doing moves like a sideways bash or a 360 spin to take out opponents. Before each race, you can pick how many allies you want by accepting someone's invitation or requesting to be allies with them. At first I was thinking, well why wouldn't I just want as many allies as possible so less people attack me. But in practice, having too many allies can cause them to get in your way since you don't want to have to bash them off the track and you also get less boost overall because there's less people to perform Carfu moves on and taking out opponents is how you gain boost. In contrast to your allies, you also have rivals. Rivals are the opposite of allies. They want to make sure they attack you at every opportunity, so it's important to hit them before they hit you. There's also a major incentive to hit them, because performing car moves on rivals gives you double points compared to other racers. Like I said earlier, there are 6 tracks in the game, which isn't really that many compared to F-Zero GX's 20, but I feel that this game's strong point is doing high speed car combat, so they put the budget in the right places when making this game. Sure I wish there were more tracks in the game, but Speed Racer makes up for its lack of tracks with its gameplay and style. 
The racing feels smooth and easy to control while still needing to be precise. Even though the graphics are very saturated and a lot of blurred due to the high speed, everything is clearly visible and visibly telegraphed so you know where you need to go. I was very pleased with how faithful the art style was to the movie while still taking creative liberties with in-game elements like the speed up graphic every time you go over a boost pad. The one thing I was let down by was the in-game music. It's definitely serviceable and gets the job done, but there's nothing in there that I'm gonna remember later on. I don't know if these tracks are from the movie or made just for the game, but a more hyped up soundtrack would fit the action-oriented gameplay better. Overall, I was actually very surprised how good Speed Racer was, considering it came out in an era where licensed games usually sucked. I'm looking at you, Shark Tale. Also, check out my video on Shark Tale to see my opinions on that. The game was very polished overall, and I found myself wanting to come back to it to try and unlock more racers and finish all the cups. Definitely a PS2 hidden gem that I doubt many people own, considering it came out so late in the PS2's lifespan and has the negative stereotype of being a movie tie-in game. One thing I noticed right away is how many things there are in the main menu alone. There's a full story mode which was really cool because it has fully animated cutscenes and a nice mission variety which is a good change of pace compared to the other modes like Grand Prix, Versus Mode, and Time Attack. After doing a race you are given credits which can be used to buy new story mode missions as well as different parts for your vehicles and completely new vehicles. I split my time between story mode and Grand Prix races. Once I'd get enough credits from doing Grand Prix races, I'd purchase the story mode mission and then beat that. If you plan on playing this game, I'd recommend racking up a bunch of credits so you can buy all the story mode missions at once. Part of me wishes that the story mode missions were unlocked from the start, but this game was so difficult that the designers probably wanted you to practice in races as you went along. The gameplay in Grand Prix mode has you racing against 30 opponents, each of which are unlockable and have different stats. The goal is to have the highest number of points at the end of the several races in each cup. There are three different cups to complete, with the fourth cup being unlocked after getting first overall in all of the other cups. I didn't end up doing that because it turns out I'm not the greatest at this game and was pretty proud of myself just for getting in the top 10. As for the story mode, there are 9 missions and each of them has a different story with fully animated cutscenes that help tie this gritty futuristic underworld of racing together. I also liked reading the synopsis of each character in the pilot profiles section of the main menu to get background info on each racer. It was nice getting some background info on some of these characters since the only time I've actually played as Captain Falcon is in Smash Bros. Not even lying, this is actually the hardest racing game I've ever played even compared to other sim-style racers like the Dirt series. Oftentimes you are going so fast that it's hard to know what to do next or even glance at the HUD for a second and the game relies on your twitch reactions and track memorization to get good. Sometimes I felt like even if I was at max speed I was still getting passed for some reason but it was also pretty easy to get back in the race. I'm guessing there's some pretty strong rubber banding that causes this. There was this one race in story mode where I was at max speed and boosting at the very end and the guy somehow passed me at the last second which was really frustrating. There's a ton of depth to the racing mechanics apart from just the twitch paced steering. There's a drifting system where you can do tight drifts that are good for super tight hairpins, as well as a slide turn which is used on more shallow corners when you want to maintain your racing line. The energy meter is also a main focus of the racing strategy. After you complete the first lap of a race, you can start using your boost meter. Every time you boost, you lose energy which is also your health. It helps to know where pit areas are, so you can use up all your boosts by the time you make it to a pit area where you can refill that meter. It's a good push and pull mechanic where you want to have enough health to not die, but also want to use boosts to go fast. There's also combat moves in the game, 
like a side attack and spin attack, but I found myself rarely using these moves because of how fast people pass you and vice versa. I would really only do them in crowds when I knew I could hit someone, similar to a Mustang driving into a crowd. There are different elements to the track design and layout that I really enjoyed. There are things like pit areas, which are pink lights on the ground that replenish your energy meter, dash plates, which speed you up, jump plates that launch you into the air, and dirt zones that decrease your speed. One thing that I really liked were the songs. Each character gets their own little theme song on the character select screen, and the songs playing on each track were super intense, which added to the fast-paced feel. F-Zero is a very engaging, fast-paced racer reliant on Twitch reflexes, track memorization, and some strategy. It's super punishing but also very rewarding because of the feeling of overcoming that harsh challenge. There's a lot of depth to the racing that leads to a satisfying learning curve I don't often get from other racers. You can still have fun just jumping in, but this game's focus was on players who wanted to master the controls. Both games succeed in different areas, and both games surprise me in different ways. I wasn't expecting Speed Racer to have as much combat as it did, but I'm glad that was a big focus since taking down other racers is endlessly satisfying. F-Zero GX surprised me with how difficult and deep its gameplay was. It's a game that demands players to put in time to get good. I'd say both games are very good, but appeal to different audiences. Speed Racer is definitely the more casual game of the two, since it's a lot harder to lose and there's no drifting mechanics, and F-Zero is for the hardcore player who's tired of getting first place every time in Mario Kart. Based on what I've said, thus far you probably know which game appeals more to you, but with all that said, in the battle of Speed Racer vs F-Zero GX, I choose F-Zero GX to come out on top. Thanks for watching, and if you like the video, make sure to like and subscribe so you can see my videos right when they come out.